Saxon Algebra 1 Lesson 3. Greetings, my students. Uh, today we have two topics that I think you're already familiar with. We'll just freshen up your brains in this particular department and turn you loose uh, with these topics that we're going to use over and over and over again. The topics are perimeter and circumference. Two words that have a very similar meaning with one important difference. We'll get to that. First, we're going to talk about perimeter. And I'm going to dive right into an example. It's always easiest to explain it with an example. All right, there's a figure of a weird thing. I don't even know what that is. And it's got some numbers written around it. Okay, our instructions are find the perimeter of the figure. All angles are right angles. Dimensions are in inches. Okay, what is the perimeter anyway? Oh, perimeter is outside edge, right? Um, it was explained to me back in, I think, third grade that the perimeter is like the farmer's fence. It goes around the boundaries of the shape. Perimeter implies straight edges. Circumference is for rounded objects. So it's the same deal. It's measuring the outside edge. This is for straight sides and this is for curved. Easy. Okay, so all we have to do is add these up. Perimeter is just the sum of the sides, right? We'll just write that down so we remember. Um, so the most important thing to do is just pick a starting place so that you don't get confused as you're adding. Let's just start right here and we'll go clockwise around. You can start anywhere you want. I just picked a random place. Okay, so we're gonna add up all these numbers. Um, I'm gonna make a list right here of the numbers so that they're in the easy format for adding. And let's see what happens. So we start here, the first side is nine. Then this side is four, this side is five. Now we run into trouble because here we have the length of a side, but there's no number in front of it. So how in the heck are we supposed to know how long this is if there's no number there? Well, John does this to us all the time. And there is a super easy way to figure it out. We have to just apply a little logic. We know, because John told us that all of these are right angles, we know that this length has to be equal to those three pieces added together, right? Because this side is equal to that side. This one's just broken up a little bit. Does that make sense? That's why it's important to know that all of these sides have right angles because everything's square and perfect. So if this side is 15 and this is four and this is three, then that is 15 minus seven, right? 15 and we've used up four and three, seven. The difference is eight. So that tells us that the length of this side must be eight, okay? So I'm writing that in a different color just to show that that's one we had to figure out for ourselves, right? Okay. Nine, four, five, eight, five again, three. And now here's another side with no number. This one's even easier though, because we just glance across and go, oh, it's exactly the same as that one. This is nine, so this has to be nine as well. So I'll add the nine right there. And then here we are, this is 15. And we're back to my arrow. That's why I put it, you guys. It seems so easy when you first start adding, but then you get sidetracked by all this missing number business. And by the time you come around, it's like, where I don't know where I even started, right? You could look at your list, but I find this to be super helpful. Okay, now all we have to do is add all this up. All right, nine plus four is 13, 18, 26, 31, 34, 43, 48. 
I did that as just straight addition. Another way to do this is to look for matching numbers and um, add them in whatever order makes it easier on your brain. This time I just went for a straight addition. I just went straight down. And I'm gonna do it again just to double check my answer. Nine plus four is 13, plus five is 18, 26, 31, 34, 43, 48. And then four plus one is five. So I would say the perimeter equals 58. And then this needs a unit on it, right? So I look back to the book and it says, oh, dimensions are in inches. That's all I need that to know that for is to write down the right unit. And that's the right answer, okay? The hardest part of this problem, once you know the secret of how to find the missing numbers, the hardest part is just adding it all up. Okay, that is the first problem. That's our example on perimeter. Now let's talk about circumference, which is a little bit more interesting and involves the ancient Greeks, so that's cool. Okay. The radius of a circle is three centimeters. Find the circumference of the circle. All right, let's draw a picture because we don't even remember what those words mean possibly. There's a circle, there's the center. Pretend it's perfect, that's not bad, but pretend it's perfect, it's not. Any, at any point, we can draw a line from the center of the circle to the outside edge of the circle, a straight line. That's not straight, pretend it is. This is called a radius. We could draw a lot of radii, couldn't we? All the way around, that is absolutely fine. If we draw another radius that makes a straight line, so we have two radii that go together to make a straight line, that is called a diameter and it's equal to two times the radius. Okay, so the radius is just one of them. Okay, and then the diameter is when there are two put together. Diameter goes all the way across. Okay, so here's where the ancient Greeks come in. They figured out that if you take the diameter of a circle and multiply it by a special number that they called pi, that will give you the circumference of the circle. Now, this number pi is a long, irrational number. That means it repeats infinitely in a non-repeating pattern. 3.1415 dot, 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 okay? The decimals go on for a long time and so every once in a while I'll get a student that likes to memorize the um, decimal digits of pi, you know, out to 60 or 100 or some crazy thing. We're not gonna use a lot of them. We're always gonna round it to 3.14. Okay, so what these ancient Greeks discovered is that if you take the length of the diameter and wrap it around the circle, it will go around three times and then have a little bit left over, 0.14. It's true for any size circle, okay? And you could make a little hobby out of this if you so desired. You could take any circle in your house, the top of a glass, um, the, a baking sheet, the top of a lampshade, you could measure straight across Cut a piece of yarn that size and then practice wrapping the yarn around the circle and you'll find that it always, go, always goes around three times with a little bit left over. Um, so this is super helpful. This is a formula that we can use to find the circumference of any circular object that we care to find. Half circles as well, we'll get to that later. But we're usually given the information about the circle as the radius and not the diameter. So we can adjust this formula ever so slightly instead of saying diameter, we can say 
two times the radius because we already said that's the same thing. This is the form that we usually use in our problems. I'll refer to this way more than I'll refer to this one. Uh, but I, you, we can write it in any order because these things are all being multiplied. I usually write it as, wait, two pi r. That's the way my brain kind of has it memorized. But you can use those three values in any order and your thing will work out, your calculation will work out just fine because order doesn't matter in multiplication. Okay, let's go on and do some problems. You wanna? I mean, sure you do, of course you do. That's why you're here, right? Example 3.2. Oh, I already wrote that and we just got distracted with other stuff. So we've got our circle. We've got a radius that is equal to three centimeters. I'll put the unit on at the end. I don't worry about writing the unit down as I draw the picture. Find the circumference of the circle. That is the radius. So let's use the form of our formula that uses radius instead of diameter. Okay, by the way, it's really important. I don't remember if I talked about this last time, but whenever we come across formulas like this, write them down on the, the inside covers of your homework notebook. The one that I'm using right here, this has a plastic front cover, so that's not much use to me. But my back cover, look at all that real estate. I've got both sides are perfectly clean cardboard that I can write formulas on. So I'm gonna write circumference equals diameter times pi, and then I'm gonna write the other version, and then I'm gonna write pi equals 3.14, okay? And above it, I think I'll write circumference. So I don't forget what it is. Whenever we get new formulas, write them on your inside cover so they're right handy when you are doing your homework. That means you need to have this book with you when you are taking notes. I know you guys are watching these videos at school, at Westgate. Um, which is fine, but that means you need to bring the right notebook because I want these formulas in the book where you're doing your homework so that when you're doing your homework, it is so easy to just flip to the cover and have what you need right there. Um, Caleb may be doing that. Jackson, I don't think you guys are going to Westgate, so it's easier for you. If you're at home, it's easier because you can just grab your book. But this is a super great resource you're gonna make for yourself. Write the formulas back here. Okay, so now all we have to do is plug this information in. We're gonna multiply two times 3.14 because that is what pi is equal to. For our purposes, we're just rounding it to that. And then we multiply it by the radius, which is three. The problem told us so. Now all I have to do is this multiplication. I can do it in any order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply 3.14 times six. I'll multiply the two and the three together. Remember when you're multiplying with decimals, you can ignore it and fill it in at the end. Six times four is 24. Six times one is six plus two is eight. Six times three is 18. Now I go back and look at how many digits are behind the decimal place in the problem and put the same number of digits in the answer behind the decimal. So, this is 18.84. Now I need to know what my unit is. It's centimeters. And circumference, we're just measuring the line around. So we don't need to square that or anything like that. We'll get to that later with area, right? We square it. But for circumference, we're just measuring a line. So we're saying that the distance around the outside edge is 18.84 centimeters long. And that's correct. Yay. Let's try another one. The circumference of a circle is 24 meters. Okay. Here's my circle. I always like to draw a picture. It helps me make sense of what the information is. And we're saying that the circumference, the measure all the way around, exactly on the edge of the circle, I'm not exactly on it, is 24 meters. Oh, okay. 
So that's, again, I drew my circle outside of the, I drew my arrow outside of it, but I mean exactly that line. Um, the circumference is 24, find the radius. Oh, so John wants us to work backwards on this one. The circumference equals 24, and I already said right up here that circumference equals two pi r. So what I'm gonna do is set those two things equal to each other, right? If the circumference is 24, I can plug it in right here. So I'm gonna say 24 equals two pi r. Cool, right? So, now we just have to solve this um, algebraically. So the first thing I'm gonna do is divide away the two. Right, I wanna get rid of this. I'm trying to isolate my r. So now I get 12 equals pi times r. All right, now here's kind of a fun thing. We can solve this just using this symbol. We'll divide both sides by pi, right? Because I want to get rid of that. So I can just use the symbol. Now this is gone and we have r by itself. But now I have to figure out what is 12 divided by pi. I need a number there. So here's 12 divided by, and now instead of using the symbol, I'll do that. 12 divided by 3.14 is another way of saying that, right? Okay, so what do we do when we have decimals here and we have to bump them and then we have to bump here as well, right? So now my decimal is here and I need to bring it up there. Okay, now we have to do some long division. Buckle in, are you ready? Three into 12. Well, that goes exactly four times and I've got these other littler numbers so I know that that's gonna to be too much, because three times four is exactly 12. So I'm gonna say we better back down to three. Four, four times is too many. So I'm gonna put the three right here, right, because that's where I want the number to line up. Three times four is 12. Three times one is three, plus one is four. Three times three is nine. Okay, that lined up exactly how I want. Now I subtract. Remember with long division, the steps are estimate, multiply, subtract, and bring down. Long division is a giant headache it works, but it takes a lot of patience because there are all these tedious steps. Um, so we, and we do it by hand. We do not use calculators to speed us through these calculations because they make us fat and lazy in the brain. So for long division, this is the process. It's called an algorithm, which means a series of steps that we repeat. So this is the algorithm that we're using over here to, um, do our long division. So we've estimated, we've multiplied, we're now ready to subtract. And now we have to do a bunch of borrowing to make it even more annoying. There's an eight, that's a nine minus four is a five, and 11, there we go. All right, so now I need to bring down another digit, don't I? I, need to, I can bring down zeros all day. I'm gonna sneeze, hang on. <coughs> better. Um, we can bring down zeros all day because we've got our decimals in places, so everything's fine. We can do the bring down. Now we're back to estimating. Three, I ignore the one and four when I estimate at first because that's, I don't know my 314 times tables. Three into two doesn't go. Three into 25. Okay, that goes. That goes a lot of times. That goes like eight times three is 24. I like that estimate because 24 gives me space because I'm gonna to have to multiply the eight times those as well. So that feels like a good estimate to me. Let's multiply. Eight times four is 32. Eight times one is eight plus three is 11. 
24, 25. Okay, good. It fit, right? It's smaller than the top number. So now we subtract. 10 minus 2 is 8, and 7 minus 1 is 6. Okay? Um, bring down another 0. All right, I can make that fit into that. I can double this, and it'll go nicely in there, right? So 680 minus, and this is going to be 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. And 6. 620, 680 minus 628. Uh, I had to squish my format because I ran out of paper, so I'm going to have to rewrite it over here. 10 minus 8 is 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. 520. And I can see it's only going to go once into that, right? 314 will only go once into 520 because twice it was 628. So I'm going to stop here. This would be 3.821. And I'm going to round that and say that the radius equals 3.82 units. What is my unit for this problem? Meters. So what in the heck did we just figure out? We figured out that if the circumference is 24 meters, then the radius must be 3.82 meters with some decimal places that we're choosing to ignore. The hardest part of this problem by far was the long division. We did it correctly, but by far that's the hardest part. So don't be like me and try to squish your long division into just a little side space. It's the main event in this problem, so, so give yourself plenty of room and don't make yourself crazy with a squish job like I did. Okay, ready? We're gonna take this and put it together for the last two problems of this lesson. Ready? Example 3.4. You guys, we're gonna be doing a ton of this style of problem. So buckle in. We have a diagram. Whenever there's a diagram, I like to copy it because number one, that's really easy and it gives my brain a break while I'm doing my homework. And number two, it helps me notice details that just reading blah, 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 my brain skips over them. Find the perimeter of the figure. Dimensions are in inches. Okay. In the unit, I don't have to worry about, I'll just put that in my answer. That's the only difference it makes. Um, perimeter, it says, but this is rounded. So this, this is a perimeter and circumference combined, isn't it? Hmm, okay, what do these lines in the corner mean? Those are the symbols for right angles. What that tells us is that all these sides are straight and even. So seeing these markers here, that just gives us relief that we don't have to worry about anything being crooked or tilting. It's all perfectly straight and that makes it easier. Cool. What does this dotted line mean? Okay, the dotted line is where the two shapes kind of connect together to make this big shape. We've got a rectangle and we've got a semicircle. So the dotted line shows us where the two join. What's important about the dotted lines is that we remember that if this is the center and this is the outside edge of the circle, then this length must be three, and this length must also be three, right? Because those represent the radius going from the center to the top edge and the center to the bottom edge. The cool thing about the radius is that it's the same all the way around the circle. So that's super helpful because that tells us that this edge must be six, three plus three. That is a trick you're gonna to have to use over and over and over and over again. Use the radius to find the length of one of the sides. Okay, so let's go around and add up all the outside edges. I'm gonna start here again and I'm gonna go clockwise. So we're gonna add up the sides, six, right, is the first one. Then we're up here. We know that these are straight, so this must be 10 also. I'll add a 10. Now, we have to do the semicircle, right? I use the symbol for a semicircle. I draw a circle, I divide it in half, and I squiggle it out. Technically, this is the other, right? I've done this like it's the 
the left side of the circle, but this is actually the right side, that's okay. It, that doesn't matter. This is just my symbol that means semicircle. In order to figure that out, we're going to have to take the formula for the circumference of a circle. Again, using our radius form. I don't like the diameter form as well because here we have a radius. And we have to divide it in half because we're using a half circumference, or another way I often write this, you'll see it in my notes. I'll draw, I'll write C for circumference, and then I'll draw my little symbol for a half circle. It doesn't matter which half I color out, but this just means half circle, all right? So what we've done is we've taken our formula for circumference and we've divided it by two because we only want a half circle. Now, when we do that, a cool thing happens the twos cancel, because there was already a two in the formula. So the formula to find the circumference of a half circle is pi times the radius. And if you want, you can add this to your list of formulas inside your book. And pause me right now and add it. Don't even go on. Okay, you're back. You've written it in your book and you're ready to go. So now we can find the circumference of this. Ours is equal to pi, 3.14, times the radius, three, okay? I'm gonna rewrite that this way so I can do the multiplication. Three times four is 12. 9.42 is the circumference of the half circle. So I'm gonna write it here, 9.42. Notice that I lined up the decimal places even though they aren't written, and I've got those two hanging off in outer space there. All right, so that takes care of this, and then we've got 10 on the bottom. All right, we've come back to the beginning. We add. And we get 35.42. Now we need a unit. It's inches. We stop and think for a second. What are we measuring? Is it area or is it a straight line? Oh, this is the line that goes around the edge. So we don't need to square that. That is our final answer. And yay. We got it right. Fabulous. Okay. Ready for one more? This is the last one. And this one's going to get even crazier still. We're gonna make it more complicated than this. I mean, just a little, but still. All right, example 3.5. This one has a diagram that's even wonkier. All right, it's got a rectangle at its base. This part is dotted and then dotted there too. Weird. Okay, we've got these in the corners. Those are a relief to us. Those are good news. That means the problem's easier than it could be. We have a half circle attached here, and the little radius thing tells us it's four. Six here, and then we have another one here, and the radius tells us that's five. I'm going to draw arrows. John doesn't have the arrows. John writes the number inside, but I don't want to make my diagram too crowded and messy. This is 14. This is 10. All right. Now, I stop and look at these places here where we have back-to-back -back radius, radii, um, to make sure that I understand how those work. This one's 4, so that means this is 4, and this is 4. 8 plus 6 is 14. Okay, that makes sense. So that this whole line is equal to that whole line. And I'm going to double check here too. This would be 5. This would be 5. 5 and 5 is 10. Okay, good. And the other side is 10. So that all makes sense to me. And I'm ready to start adding. Let's go to our same starting place. 10. That's easy. Plus this. Okay, the circumference of a half circle we just figured out is pi times the radius. It's 2 pi r divided by 2. The 2's cancel. We saw that before. So I can use this, and I can 
say that it's equal to four times pi. So 3.14 times four. So the circumference of this is 12.56. Then I can add the six, lining up my decimals. Now here's another half circle. That's what makes this problem harder, is it's got two half circles. But I can use this formula again. So it's 3.14 times five this time. Five times four is 20. So it's 15.70. I can write it as 15.7. I'll put the zero in just so it's easy to keep my column straight. That's this. And then we have 14 for our last side, right? So one, two, three, four, five different calculations. That looks right. And I'm adding all of these up. Six, two, carry the one. Three plus six is nine, plus five is 14, plus four is 18. One, two, three, four, five. 58.26 units long. What's the units on our problem? Look back at it, it says dimensions are in feet. Okay, that's a T, looks kind of crazy. So there is our final answer, and that's correct. Yay! These problems take a lot of patience, you guys. You're cruising along with the straight edges and everything seems good, and then you get a crazy half circle. Please memorize this formula. It will save you so much work if you just have it or you know, write it in your notebook so that you can use that little shortcut and just simplify the formula, multiply it. You'll start to memorize these. Um, but just do the quick calculation and then add it to your column. Draw the arrow so that you know where you begin and end. It seems so obvious at the beginning, but by the time you do all this crazy stuff, your brain's going to be like, I don't know where I started. It's too hard. That's what you'll be saying to yourself. But this isn't too hard. You've got this. We're going to be doing it for a long time. Let me just show you in the practice. Remember, we're doing all the practice problems and we're doing the odd-numbered problem set and the even-numbered problem set, two days worth. So do all the practice problems the first day. Um, this one is a nice, easy one where you just have to figure out like the missing stretch, but there's no half circles. This one, you'll have to use our circumference formula to get that rounded part. And then down here, there's more, all right? Okay, so just to remind you, This is what this week's homework will look like. We'll do lesson three. And we'll do the practice. Plus the odds on the first day. And then we'll do the evens. And then later in this week on Wednesday, I'll send you lesson four. And you'll do the same thing practice plus the odds and then the evens. So this is what this week's homework looks like. Next week we will be on our, we'll switch over to our standard format and cruise from there. All right. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.